Paddy is joining us here, as is Pascal Mooney of Keep It Country on Radio 2 and founder of the Lonely Hearts Club. Paddy Cole, why were the superstars minus you? Well, I, I've been off the stage, Donica, for about uh, four or five months now. I'm doing promotional work for the band instead. An old fella like me doesn't fit into that sort of a scene. As you can see, that's the best band you've had on yet. So an old fella like me doesn't fit into that sort of a scene. You what know? I like about you, Paddy, is your <laughs> modesty. Yeah. <laughs> Gentle, modest man, and the man alongside you, of course, is equally modest, Pascal Mooney. Don't Pascal, know, how, are how are you? I'm very well, and it's and nice to see you And you're very welcome again. on the Travelling Road Show. And may I compliment you on your absolutely d disgusting-looking outfit? I know, it's really nice. And Who's that, me or Donovan? May, may I compliment you? Well, you're past it anyway. <laughs> you may I compliment it? you No, as it's well. very nice, Donovan. That guru of Radio 2. It's very nice. <laughs> I love the boots. You like the boots, mm -hmm. do you? I got those from Big Tom, actually. <laughs> no, no, better, nice no better man. Paddy Cole, we, we held pop music there and we've been talking and listening to country music. What do you think of country music? I think it stinks. It's oh. desperate. And you're <laughs> living in Castle Blaney. <laughs> oh, uh, all joking aside, I think Castle Blaney has, has mm. the name of uh, being the Nashville of Ireland. Mm. And I suppose it probably is. I think country music did an awful lot of harm to show business. Really? Yeah. Uh, when the country music scene was really big, you had an awful lot of fellas jumping on the bandwagon, which happens in any scene, as Pascal, I'm sure, will agree on that. I won't agree with the first statement I made, I know, but uh, I think there wasn't enough entertainment in it. It was the same thing. It was a three-chord trick, tune after tune, all night. To me, it's boring. Apart from a fellow called Waylon Jennings, I think it's you're boring very, music. You're a very selective sort of gentleman, aren't you? No, as a matter of fact, it, I, I have a, a wide selection of country music and records at home, like, and uh, jazz is my first love. But uh, pop music, at least, it makes you think a bit about when you're going to have to play and things like that. I'm, I'm talking from a playing point of view, you know, as well as the listening. I think years ago in the old show band scene, people gathering up around the front of the stage and watch the bands. I remember Pascal here coming up in Sligo, actually, in Strand Hill. Do you remember that? on the Capital Showman days. But they came up, you see, and we, we put on a show. Right. We'd, or we tried to put on a show, you know, like, and we dressed up, actually, and did different acts. Mm. And, but uh, I, I listen to country music. I'm not, don't get me wrong, or I'm not being a musical snob or a, a pseudo about it or anything like that. But, You'd uh, never be that, Paddy. I know from songs that I've heard and songs that are played on, on the radio programme, there's such a similarity between the structure of the song and the lyrics and the sentimentality of the songs that's so akin and so close to the Irish heart and so close to the Irish um, sense of uh, whatever. Dead? Uh, well, not really, no. I mean, it's very much uh, of, of the Irish makeup. It's that all the same. I think, yes, I think that any suggestion that what I'm doing, um, because it's got an American tinge to it, is in some way contributing to the downfall of Irish culture. I think that's crazy. It's a stupid statement. Pascal, can I come in there? I, I'd have to say that uh, Pascal, at the moment, as it's generally known, has the most listened to uh, programme on radio. So I believe <coughs> your, your time ratings are very high. On radio, not, as you say. Radio yeah, well, 2 I'm, you're talking about. Yeah, Radio 2. Not, ah, that yes. doesn't include highways and byways. Ah, yes, thank you very much, Lou. I must get the facts. Yes. Right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but... Uh, I suppose that speaks for itself, that uh, country does. music is very popular. Mm -hmm. It is very big, like, and you see the Wembley Festival and uh, all the bands that you've seen around Castle Blaney and... But there's, there's of course, there's a very insidious side to Pascal Mooney, and I want to throw a thing to you, Paddy, about this. Looking at Pascal Mooney there now, as he sits, full of sang froid and dignity, yeah. you see the kind of man, if you were a young lad, you'd write to, to get a wife or a girlfriend for you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I this believe is, lots of people are writing to him for wives. This is leading to something. <laughs> would you write to him? I certainly would not. <laughs> I mean, would I you buy a desperate taste? <laughs> would you buy a second-hand guitar from this man? I wouldn't buy a car from him even. <laughs> I think I wanted to say, Donica, by the way, getting back uh, very, very briefly, getting back to this question of the sort of cultural identity. I wouldn't sell you a car anyway. <laughs> I want your lonely, your lonely well, hearts. How successful is it? 
It's I, proved very successful. In fact, it's gone beyond what I had originally intended it to be. It was only to be a part of the program, simply because country music has a certain sentimentality about it, and the lyrics of country songs lends itself to people who probably might have lost their boyfriend, girlfriend, or were looking for a boyfriend, girlfriend. They're right, we, they're right to you. Well, right we to put your in this dear part, Pascal. Well, we put in this uh, section called the Lonely Hearts Club. It was picked up from a Billy Joe Spears song, Lonely mm. Hearts Club. And all it was, it was just another way of uh, country fellas meeting country girls, or country girls meeting country fellas. And what it's I have got very slow since my time, yeah. Well, what I've discovered <laughs> is that there's an awful lot of people in this country, young people. And I'm yeah. not talking about the sort of 45, 55 year old bachelor with a big farm of land. I mean, they're very few and far between among the people that write to me. Thanks I'm talking about 18, 19, and 20 year old yeah. uh, fellas and girls. I remember one, inst one particular example of a young lad from a particular part of the country, uh, he probably would recognise the letter himself, uh, who said that he had, he was 18 years of age, he lived a couple of miles from the nearest town where he worked in a shop, he had done his leaving cert and he had only got passed on one subject and he was desperately lonely and very, very depressed and he didn't think that life was really worth living and he wanted to meet women of the opposite sex and he wanted to make friends, etc. That lad got something like 55 replies, and I'm quite certain they were nearly all from women. Now, when I say... Oh, did he get round them all? Did he get round them all? No, the reason is that I'm quite certain is that it's a purely confidential service. When the letters are sent in, there's just a name on the outside of the envelope, and we put them all into a very large envelope and send them off to the person. We don't even see the letters. Do you ever get a send-up at all? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Of course we do, yeah. I mean, I got a letter from a woman up in, uh, from here, from Castle Blaney, who said the only person that she wanted to write to her was black men. <laughs> <laughs> Get Laurie Hearts for her. <laughs> <laughs> no white men need apply, she said. Oh.